Okay, this is going to be part three of the series on improper integrals. And in, if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch the first two videos that will show you how we've gotten to this point. Um, in the part two video, we did a problem that involved U substitution. On this video, we'll do one that involves uh, working with the inverse trig functions. Now, the problem looks like this. We're going to start at zero, find the integral from zero to infinity. So looking at the rules that we had before, the rules look like this. So what we'll do, this will be another case one type problem, and we're going to go off to the right from starting at some fixed number a off to a positive infinity, and we use these same two steps that we used the last time. So the first step will be on the inside in black here, um, we'll find the definite integral, we'll pick some, some number b, and we'll evaluate a definite integral from a to b. Then, once we've got that answer, we'll take the limit as b goes to infinity, and that will give us the integral all the way out to infinity. So again, if you haven't done it yet, watch the previous videos, and they'll give you an idea of how this works. So let's try it on this problem. Okay, now first of all, before we get into it, let's take a look at the graph and see what this thing looked like if you graphed it. If you actually graphed it, it would look like this right here. So uh, it's a curve. It looks kind of like this. Now we want to find the integral from 0 to positive infinity. So basically, it's going to start here at 0, and it's going to go way off here to the right to a positive infinity. So what we're going to be finding will be this area under the curve on the right-hand side here. Now again, what our rules say is that we can't, we can't find an integral from 0 to infinity, so we'll find an integral from 0 to some fixed number b, and then take the limit as b goes to infinity. So again, looking at the rules, it'll be on this inside part here, set it up from 0 to b, and evaluate this definite integral. So the way we've got it, it would look like this. We'll just come over here, and I'll just pick some number b right here. And I'll find the integral from 0 to b, which will give me this shaded area in here. Then, as I let b go off to a positive infinity, it will pick up this additional area out here. That'll be part two of the problem. So let's go ahead and run through it and see what it looks like. So um, this will be step number one. And again, just a reminder, we're doing this inside part, trying to find a definite integral first. Then in step two, we'll take care of the limit. OK, so we'll set it up as the integral from 0 to this fixed number b right here. So from 0 to b of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Now, a lot of these improper integral problems, the big trick really is can you find the correct rule to apply when you're doing the integral? And the trick here is to recognize that this thing is actually in the forms of one of the inverse trig functions. Now, if you think of it, you can kind of think of it like this. Rather than 1, think of it as being 1 squared. So you've got 1 over 1 squared plus x squared. Now, if you look in your trig rules, um, under the inverse trig, you'll see some rule, a rule that looks like this. Now, what the rule says is this. The integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared is equal to 1 over a times the inverse tangent of x over a plus c. Now, if you don't remember this, you need to look back at your inverse trig integrals, and it should remind you what the form is. So really, the trick to this entire problem is just recognizing that this thing actually is in the form of an inverse trig. So we'll take advantage of that to solve the problem. So now what that's going to give us would be this. Uh, that's going to change into the antiderivative of this using this rule here. Now again, think of this as being the a thing right here, and think of this as being the x thing right here. So you've got an a and an x. So a is 1, so this would be 1 over 1 times the inverse tangent, and I'm just using the formula, of x over a, but in this case a is 1, evaluated from uh, 0 to b. Now we can go ahead and simplify this. This would just turn into 1 over 1 is 1, so it would just be the inverse tangent of x evaluated from 0 to b. So we'll continue on through that. Now again, just in definite intervals, plug in the top number minus plug in the bottom number. 
So this would turn into the inverse tangent evaluated at the top number minus the inverse tangent uh, at the bottom number, which is 0. OK, so what that's going to get you to would be this. Now, what angle? Uh, the inverse tangent of 0 will actually turn out to be 0. So this term right here will just go to 0. So what that leaves you with is uh, the inverse tangent of b. So what this part is, this is going to give you the area under this curve between 0 and b. So what that is, that's part 1. So let's go back and look at our rules here. Now you've done the inside part. You've got this definite integral. Now to find the answer to the problem, all you need to do is take the limit as b approaches infinity. So what that's going to do, b is going to move way off here to the right. You'll pick up this additional area over here, and you'll be done. So this will be part 2 of the problem. So now find the limit as b approaches infinity of the first part of the problem, which was the tangent, inverse tangent, of b. Now, as b goes to infinity, um, what happens to the inverse tangent? And this is a case where it might help to just remember what the graph looks like. If you graphed a tangent, um, and just remember this is minus pi divided by 2 to pi divided by 2. And if you made a quick sketch of the graph, the graph itself, remember you've got an asymptote there, it looks something like this. It kind of comes in like this, and it goes off toward a positive infinity here and a negative infinity here. So a negative infinity this way and a positive infinity this way. And then you've got an asymptote right here and an asymptote right here. So what this thing says is this, is uh, if the tangent's going off toward infinity, so as the tangent approaches infinity, what angle is it approaching? So as the graph approaches infinity, the angle is approaching pi divided by 2. So this will be equal to pi divided by 2. And that's going to be the solution to the problem. So this area under here, as you go off to infinity, that entire area would be equal to pi divided by 2. So the solution would be uh, pi divided by 2. And just a reminder, since the integral settled on a fixed number, it is convergent. So this would be a convergent problem. And that's going to be the solution. So again, the two-step process is, first of all, just pick some number b and evaluate a definite integral in terms of b. And it turned out to be this part right here. Then to find the integral, if you go all the way out to infinity, just take the limit as b goes off here to the right to infinity. So the limit as b approaches infinity of step one, and that gives you the solution. And again, if it settles on a fixed number, it's convergent. If it had turned out to be a positive or negative infinity, then it would be divergent. But in this case, it was convergent. So there's a sample of an improper integral that uses, and again, you just had to remember, one of your inverse trig function integrals.